Hi, in this video, I want to show you a function that I feel that most people graph incorrectly the first time they see it. And I've given this function to you know students and to even teachers, and their first instinct isn't always 100% correct. Um, it's not a hard function, but it's still one worth looking at. So the function is f of x equals the log of x over the natural log of x. And if you're curious to where I got this problem, it's from some old random pre-calc book that I have. I don't even know the name of the book. It's just some really old book that I got for like $5 several years ago. And it's the last question in one of the sections. And so when I saw this problem, I thought, whoa, that's gonna be a really fun extra credit question for people. And so over the years, I've sometimes given it as extra credit. And most of the time, nobody can do it. Even with the calculator, most of the time, no one can graph it correctly. So the first trick is to think about what you have. You have the log of x over the natural log of x. And just working with this is going to be very, very difficult. So we need to like simplify this expression somehow. So recall, if you have the log base a of b, that's equal to the natural log of b over the natural log of a. This is called the change of base formula. Usually you learn this in like a college algebra class uh, in college and, and maybe in high school, but I don't really know uh, when, when it's taught there. So ln b over ln a. So in this particular problem, uh, it's really log base 10. So that'll be our first steps. So this is log base 10, whoops, log base 10 of x over the natural log of x. Okay, so we could do that because whenever you write log, usually, not always, but usually uh, the base is an implied 10. Usually it's a 10 most of the time. All right, so now we can apply the change of base formula to the numerator here. So our a is 10 and our b is x. So this will be the natural log of x over the natural log of 10. Okay, and I'm going to put this in parentheses here like this. And this is over the natural log of x. And let's go ahead and carefully do the simplification here. Uh, this is equal to, so it's ln of x over ln of 10, that's what we have, but it's all being divided by the natural log of x. And so this is really the natural log of x over one. And so when you divide by something, you really multiply by the reciprocal. So this is really times one over the natural log of x. Beautiful, right? And these cancel. And then so you get one over the natural log of 10. And I would say like typically uh, in maybe, I don't know, a class of 30 students, if I give this as an extra credit question, maybe, maybe one person will notice this, uh, maybe. But oftentimes they'll still graph it wrong. And, and you're going to see why, right? There's a, there's a really subtle point. Uh, to this graph. It's not hard. Once you see it, it's like, oh, I should have known that. It's easy. But if you don't see it, <laughs> it's it's tough. Okay, so this is a constant. And if you put this in your calculator, you get like roughly 0. Uh, 0.434, uh, something like that. There's some, some decimals or something. It's roughly uh, some number like that. And I'm going to go ahead and write down the original question here one more time so we can all see it on the screen. So this is f of x and it was the log of x over the natural log of x. And so the thing that most people do uh, with this problem that I've seen, the people who make it this far, which I'm honestly really impressed uh, whenever people do, right? So this is the y-axis, this is the x-axis. Okay. And then I'm just gonna put uh, the number one here like this. And they typically say, okay, well, it's a log function. So we know that if you're looking at the graph of just a regular log function, right? Just like ln x or something, uh, it's gonna look something like this. Okay, and it's got a vertical asymptote here. So you know that x has to be positive. This is the graph of say ln x or maybe even log x. And so x is positive, so you can't have negative numbers. So you say, okay, uh, so the y value is 0. 0.434, so it's maybe like right here, okay? And so then maybe maybe it looks like this, because it's a, it's a constant, right? So this the height here is 0. 0.34. And that's almost correct, but there's another 
subtle point, right? So it's a constant, so it's a horizontal line, so we're there. We're not including zero, so we're good and only positive numbers, but there's still something missing. And this is the part that most people uh, miss. It's the fact that you can't plug in one, right? Because look what happens when you plug in one. You end up with the log of one over the natural log of one. And from this graph, you see that that is going to be equal to zero, right? The y value there is zero. So this is zero over zero, which is undefined. You can't do that in math. So this is still incorrect, right? Still incorrect. So basically, the correct graph, the correct graph would look something like this. Here's the y-axis. Here's the x-axis. So this is wrong. And then here's one. And let me switch colors. Let's go to blue here. And then at 0.434, we have a hole here. But then over here at one, we have another hole. And it keeps going like that. So really, really sneaky. So this would be the correct graph of, of our function, of our function. I often ask people to find the domain as well. So the domain of this function would be 0, 1, union 1, infinity. So those are usually the questions I would ask. But um, really, really tricky. Most people, uh, from what I found, that's why I wanted to make this video, uh, don't get this far. Like, they, they don't make it here. Whenever they make it here, they feel like a rock star. I mean, I would. <laughs> you know, like, oh, whoa, change of base. I made it this far. That's that's some seriously good intuition. You've made good progress. But then you get here and you think you get it right. It's like, no, you forgot about the little hole at one. So just a fun little problem. Uh, just kind of cool. Kind of a fun problem. And reminds you of this formula, right? The change of base formula does exist. You know, you learn it in an algebra class, and then uh, do you use it again? Yeah, sometimes, and here's an example of where you use it. I hope this video has been helpful to someone. Good luck, and take care.